Hello and welcome to Saltwire today for Tuesday, March 7th. I'm your host, Kate Walker. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Nova Scotia has taken a major step in addressing the issue of access to health care, announcing that U.S. trained doctors will no longer have to prove their skills through additional certifications to be fully licensed here in our province. The decision is expected to remove a barrier for doctors who have trained in the United States but would like to practice here in Nova Scotia. The College of Physicians and Surgeons say their organization and other licensing bodies are looking at which other countries might be suitable for accommodation. Nova Scotia is the first province to extend this recognition to U.S. doctors. And Sheldon McLeod will have more on this from Dr. Gus Grant, the CEO of the college, coming up on Thinking Out Loud. Former IWK CEO Tracy Kitch will be heading to trial again. The Nova Scotia Court of Appeal has unanimously ruled that Kitch's fraud conviction appeal made today should be allowed. Her conviction has been quashed and a new trial has been ordered. Today, the court heard from submissions from counsel for Kitch. It wasn't immoral. It wasn't unprincipled. It wasn't dishonest or unscrupulous. If you're objectively being dishonest... You don't tell a third person with no ties to the fraudulent conduct what they did, what you did. She told numerous people what she did. Numerous people within the administrative staff at IWK, what she did. I am booking a hotel for my mother. It was open. The taxi was for my son. It was open. I incorrectly charged iTunes to the corporate card. It was open. Some of the flight passes were personal. It was open. There wasn't attempt, any attempt to secrete any of those activities. Kitch was sentenced last year to five months in jail, followed by a year's probation after being convicted of defrauding the Halifax Hospital by charging more than $43,000 in personal expenses to her corporate credit card. An update now to a death in a Nova Scotia emergency room we first told you about in January. The Nova Scotia Health Authority has filed a defense in response to a wrongful death lawsuit filed by the family of Allison Holtoff, who died in the Cumberland Regional Health Center's emergency department on New Year's Eve. The defense claims that any care provided to Holtoff was reasonable, appropriate, and in a manner consistent with the applicable standard of care in the circumstances. The family's statement of claim alleges that Allison was in extreme pain and not given proper medical attention after arriving in the ER. They allege that she was not seen by a doctor for seven hours and that her death was caused by the negligence of the Nova Scotia Health Authority and the emergency room physician. The family is seeking unspecified special damages, damages for loss of care and costs. Both parties are now awaiting a hearing to determine if the defendant is liable for the death of Allison Holtoff iPhone users are being asked to be aware of a crash detection feature on some versions of the devices. Late last month, emergency services in Halifax responded to a crash in Kinsack that turned out to be just a dropped iPhone. The only information the dispatcher had was an automatic message from an Apple iPhone indicating that the owner of the phone had been in a severe car crash with GPS coordinates for the approximate location. It turns out Apple's new car crash detection feature, available on the iPhone 14 and certain series of the Apple Watch, sends out emergency alerts after 20 seconds if it sends a sudden impact or motion unless the user is able to cancel the response. It's on by default, but it can be turned off. To do so, go to Settings, Emergency SOS, and turn off Call After Serious Crash. A new marketing campaign launched by the province will aim to encourage people to visit Nova Scotia and build on tourism recovery. There's no way. Nova Scotia does not have over 13,000 kilometers of coastline. You want to bet? It's called Your Ocean Playground and is set to run through the end of summer in Ontario, Quebec, Connecticut, Maine and Massachusetts. The province is also advertising in Germany and the United Kingdom and running year-round ads here in Nova Scotia and across Atlantic Canada. The government will invest an additional $2.7 million this year in campaigns to support earlier and extended marketing of the province. A total of about $8.6 million will be spent in 2023. 
It's time now for a glimpse of today's Thinking Out Loud with Sheldon McLeod. Today, Sheldon is speaking with Dr. Gus Grant, the head of the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Nova Scotia. American board, uh, board certified physicians able to practice in Nova Scotia. And no other province has done this yet. Tell me about that process. In many respects, it's a, it's a, it's an extraordinary and significant departure from the Canadian philosophy of licensure that's been in, uh, around for a long time. The departure is that that we in Nova Scotia have have said we're confident that American training, and American practice, and American certification, is is substantially similar to that which is required in Nova Scotia. We're confident that an American board certified specialist is has the skills and ability to safely practice in Nova Scotia. What we've done with this decision is bypass the role of the Royal College and said, we're not going to <clears throat> require you to challenge those exams or obtain Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons certification. And I expect we'll get some blowbacks from some blowback from physicians in in Nova Scotia who are proud of and appropriately proud of their Royal College certification. And of course, it goes without saying we'll probably we'll, we won't be popular with the, the Royal College as well. Uh, but the issue for us is are are American board certified physicians safe and competent, and we're confident they are. And for Sheldon's full conversation, head to the opinion section of saltwire.com. Time now for the Atlantic Sports Wire presented by Scott Squires. The Nova Scotia female hockey team made history at the recent Canada Games in Prince Edward Island, bringing home a silver medal. The first medal ever for a Nova Scotia female hockey squad at the Canada Games. The team, led by Captain Sam Morrison, battled hard throughout the week-long tournament, going down to defeat 3-0 to British Columbia in the gold medal game. Goalie Raya Stewart was a standout for Team Nova Scotia all week long, and she made 45 saves in the gold medal final. The players and coaching staff were overwhelmed by the support they received from all across Canada, calling it a Cinderella story. It was an unforgettable experience for the team who formed a tight family bond throughout their journey, and they made Nova Scotians proud of the blue and white. Congratulations to Coach Corey Chevery and Team Nova Scotia on your silver medal. In Halifax, I'm Scott Squires for the Atlantic Sports Line. Thank you, Scott. On to weather now to see what's coming up in the forecast. We're going to check in now with our weather specialist, Alistair Alders. Thanks, Kate. Well, quite frankly, it was another dull day here in the Halifax area with plenty of cloud cover, some flurries, and even a bit of grapple around. I mean, thankfully not stormy. I'm enjoying the break from predicting uh, the storms. However, it will be remaining unsettled before a bit of sunshine does make a return appearance. This evening, it will be mainly cloudy and we'll have a chance of flurries with the temperature near minus one and north winds of 20 to 40 kilometers per hour are forecast tonight. Those northerly winds will gust 30 to 50 throughout the day on our Wednesday. As we wake up on Wednesday morning, it will be a cloudy start to the day with a chance of showers and flurries with the temperature near two degrees, mainly cloudy in the afternoon Wednesday heading up to a high of four degrees, still holding on to that chance of showers and drizzle. Now, I do think the cloud cover will be dominating for the second half of the week, but we will start to see more opportunities for sunny breaks as the chance of flurries will be diminishing as the week progresses. Right now, the upcoming weekend looking brighter and calmer, so that is certainly some good news. Kate. Thank you, Alistair. That's all for now. For more extended video and full online articles, stay tuned to saltwire.com. And you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm your host, Kate Walker. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.